I don't care. You don't have to like me. I'm the bad guy. Like Scarface. You know why they have guys like me? So that you can point at me and say, that's the bad guy. You need somebody like that. You need somebody that you can point to and say, that's the bad guy. And you got to be a bad guy. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, my question is advice on raising kids and protecting them from all this craziness in schools and on the media. Uh, I keep all the kids busy. We skate, we surf, we train together. We go to therapy. We do a whole lot of cool things. BJJ, com, com, Hawaiian, Kempo, uh, all that. However, they still have a lot of screen time with their phones and video games. And I don't know, don't know a fair way to manage it and keep it safe. I feel like they earn it after working hard, right? They're doing all those cool things with me. Uh, but I notice so many bad habits and just overall concerned about what they're being exposed to. They already have friends transitioning. And when I try to explain that there's only boys and girls, I'm the bad guy. They're at an age and a time I'm just getting nervous about every time I take their phones, it's like a crackhead until they get it back. I got a lot of questions. So, Justin, um, I'm in the same boat with you, bro, where I have my children and they have screens. And like yourself, we're constantly finding things for them to do outside of the house. Like my kids today are at horseback riding camp with their cousin. One of my nieces came and my, and my mother-in-law came and Colleen took them all to horseback riding camp. My son is actually at baseball camp. So we're constantly finding things for them to do, right? We're getting, they're involved in sports, music all kinds of stuff. Um, but when they come home, they do like I did when I was a kid, only slightly different. When I was a kid, I would come home and what would I do? I would turn on the TV. We had eight channels and me and my siblings, all of us would sit in the living room where my parents are right next door walking through and watch what we watching on the screen, right? That's how we kick back. That's how we relax when we were kids until Nintendo came out and we'll play that also. So it's the same as my kids, but it's different in that they take their screens, they put on their earphones and I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're watching. They could be all watching different things. They're all engaged in different things. And it creates chaos. And that's what the cell phones do. These screens create chaos, particularly in the home, because the screens manipulate our children. We could do our best to keep Satan outside our home, but he comes in through the screen. He's coming in in every which way through the screens. And so the same issues you're having with, I just had an argument. One of my daughters, right? Not all of them, but one of them in particular, she is adamant that I am wrong that boys are boys and girls are girls. I fight with my kids, right? You would think, oh, Elliot, his, it must be perfect in his house and all his children are alpha males and submissive girls. That's not the case. I'm battling the fucking culture every fucking day. It's me against the culture in my house. I'm in a war in my house and I'm constantly having to fight what they're getting exposed to. I could take the phones away, but as soon as they get it back, they're going to go right back to the algorithm TikToks that show them transitioning males and saying that this is a real woman. It's all garbage. It's all trash. And I wish I could get it. I wish I could smash those fucking phones. I could smash the phones. I've threatened to smash the phones. One day I might smash the fucking phones, but it's not going to solve anything. Right? Because they're just going to, they're going to resent me and they're going to go back just like your kids. What are you, you going to do? You take the phone away, like you said, and then they act like crack addicts. Right? It's a problem. What do we do? My opinion, my approach, what I do, I could be right or wrong. I'm the bad guy. Right? You say it. I'm a bad guy. Well, guess what? I'm the bad guy. I will not yield to my teenage daughter's perception of what is real in life. Her mind is fucked. Just like all the kids who are getting their information from TikTok. They're getting their information from Instagram. They're, they're, all their friends are from shitty homes where the parents, any parent that allows their child to go through a sex change is a retarded parent, is a dumb parent. You know what they are? They're modern parents that allow the children to rule the roost. Fathers make the rules. I don't care what your friends do. I don't care what you think you should do. You're not doing that shit while you're in my house. Right? And I will fight tooth and nail for what is true until you decide to leave. 
I think that's all we can do. I think if we're passive, I think if we're soft, I think if we just let them be who they want to be, that they're going to make bad decisions. It's not going to work out well. It's Fathers need to be active again. I think that we've gone through a stage or a few generations of passive fatherhood. Passive fatherhood where the father literally steps out of the, any kind of decision making, lets the wife make all the decisions for the children, and the dad just hopes everything works out well. Not me! I step up, I speak up, I make my opinion known, I point out right and wrong, I draw the boundaries. Oh, you don't like my rules? I don't care, right? I got daughters. They want to wear stuff that I rail against in these videos, right? Daddy, it's not fair. I don't care if it's not fair. You're not wearing that. You're not leaving my house in that clothes. I don't even know how you got that. That's one of the biggest problems because sometimes I have to question my wife. I'm like, where the hell did she get this clothing? Why is that even in my fucking house, right? I have to fight. You have to fight. And you have to be the bad guy sometimes, man. <clears throat> I remember my dad saying this all the time because it, it was, the battle wasn't nearly as, as dangerous as it is today for the souls of our children. It was bad back then in the 1980s and stuff, but it's so much worse right now. And I remember my dad, my dad wouldn't let us have cable TV, right? And he was like, I don't care. You don't need to have all those channels. There's no reason for you to see all that TV. Why do you need it? And I remember like fighting with my dad and being mad at my dad and trying to explain to him that it's not fair. You know what my dad would say? I don't care. You don't have to like me. I'm the bad guy. Like Scarface. You know why they have guys like me? So that you can point at me and say, that's the bad guy. You need somebody like that. You need somebody that you can point to and say, that's the bad guy. And you got to be a bad guy. You got to be a bad guy, especially with your daughters. Maybe that's going to make my daughters have daddy issues. But I'd rather they have daddy issues because daddy was stern, because daddy was disciplined, because daddy didn't put up with any bullshit, because daddy didn't let me push him around with my far left progressive bullshit ideas and then resent men because of that than because I was weak. The worst thing you could do is be a weak dad. So keep taking, away the, keep taking it away from them when you need to take it away. That's the biggest leverage point in our home. If the children act up or they're not doing what they got to do, their phones get taken away. I even shut off, you know, you can shut off their data. You can shut off the, the Wi-Fi. Sometimes I just shut that shit off, right? I got one of my daughters right now who's, who's, who's trying to fight me with something. I just told her, look, you either do what I tell you to do or I'm shutting off your phone. <gasps> you can't do that ultimatum. Oh, yes, I can. Yes, I can. I'm your daddy. I pay for everything. You're living in my house. That phone you have, that's mine. Until you're paying for your own, that's mine. When I ask you for it, you give it to me. When I want your password, you give it to me. If I want to search your phone, you give it to me. That's the rules in my house. And every once in a while, we do an audit. I think it's time for an audit, actually, because you have no rights. That's another one that these children will say. And I remember saying it too when I was a kid and then I grew up and I realized that my parents were right. They don't have any rights. Children do not have rights. They don't deserve rights, right? This is one of the, this is one of the craziest things that this culture tries to make children believe that they have rights in their home with their parents. You only right you have is to breathe. You have no rights. You know why you have no rights? Because you have no responsibility. That's the way it's been, and that's the way it should be. Those who have responsibility get the rights. You don't have rights just because you're breathing, right? Just because you're alive, just because you're here, you have rights. No, it doesn't work that way. And it wasn't intended that way even in our rebellious U.S. culture, right? It, back in the day, you didn't vote if you, if you weren't a contributor, right? Now every Tom, Dick, and Harry that crosses the border can, can vote. It's retarded, right? You don't vote unless you have responsibility. When you have responsibility, then you have authority. Then you have rights, right? So don't let your children bullshit you with any idea about my rights. You have no rights. And I'll tell them straight up, you have no rights. You have no rights. You have no rights. When you leave here, you can have all the rights you want. Then you could deal with the world. I did my job. That's another one from my father. Right? I, get a lot of, I get a lot of fathering tips from my father, and I didn't understand my father until I became a father. And I wouldn't have been the kind of father that I am right now had I not grew up and recognized that all the things I hated my father for, he was right. He was right. 
So uh, I don't even remember what I was going to say. But the point is that you got to, oh, this is what my dad would always say. He would say that I can, he would say about himself, he says, I can sleep well at night because I know I did the right thing. I told you the right thing. I did. I told you no lies. I didn't yield to your ways. I set up firm boundaries. I built a foundation. That's what he would say. I made a foundation for you in your life. What you do with that foundation, I have no control over. When you leave my house, you do whatever you want. I can't control that. But as long as you're living in my house, I'm building that foundation. You're going to do the things that I, the way I tell you to do it because I am responsible for you. You know that we're responsible for our children's souls, that when we die and when our children die and we go to heaven, God's going to ask, you know, why didn't you protect your children from that pornography? Why didn't you protect your children from transgenderism? Why didn't you protect your children? Just the same way that Adam, that God asked Adam why he didn't protect his wife. It's like, why you let that fucking snake in the garden? God was looking at Adam like sideways, like, bro, I told you, to, I told you don't eat from that fruit and you let the snake in. Why didn't you protect your wife from this snake? He's going to ask us the same thing, man. Disney, all that, all that bullshit. And I, look, I might have to go to purgatory because I didn't do a perfect job. I hated Disney for decades, but yet... My kids watch demonic Disney movies. Disney is from the devil. Make no question about it. Disney is demonic. So my kids watch the Disney movies. They're getting on TikTok. And TikTok is the worst. TikTok is the best and TikTok is the worst. You know why I love TikTok? Because that algorithm is so strong that uh, I only get to see what I want to see. And it's all things that confirm my bias. <laughs> but you know what I know is happening? Same things happen to my kids. And my daughter... Some of them, right? Not all of them. Not all, not all, right? I can't say all my daughters, but a couple of them, one of them, sometimes two of them. They have a different opinion on things. I know I know. TikTok is feeding them all the conf confirmation bias that they need in order to keep having those wrong thoughts, those wrong ideas, right? But I'm just going to I'm going to kind of come full circle and lay it down one more time for you and tell you that you're doing the right thing. You're doing a good job. Continue to draw the line. Continue to set up the boundaries. Continue to say the most magical word, the most important word, one word that will keep your house in order. No. Learn how to say no. Learn how to say no. Keep saying no. No is the most important word a father can use with his children. No, no, no. And they will try to manipulate, they will try to con conversate, they will try to run circles around you verbally, and you just step back, cross your arms, and say, no, no, no. Hope that helps, bro. That's a, it's, it's a tough topic. It's a tough topic because it's like, the reason why I say it's tough is because I'm swimming in this here with you. We're swimming in the same, you got four kids over there, right? One, two, three, four, right? I got four kids too, bro. I'm swimming in the same mess. I'm swimming in the same mess. There were things I wish I would have done better. I wish I would have known. But then again, you know, there's only so much that we can do also because the culture raises our children. We don't raise our children. Make no mistake about that. We have to be active raisers of our children. Where in the past, you know, we, we could be passive because it was like there was less influence. But the world is influencing our children just like the snake in the garden, man. The snake is in our home. We got to put filters. You got to put filters on your on your uh, on your internet. Put you got to put porn filters. If you haven't done this yet, go into the uh, into the Wi-Fi and go into the data for whichever service provider you have. And you got to put filters. Put filters on this shit. My kids get mad because shit is filtered that maybe don't need to be filtered. But I'm like, hey, that's just part of the deal. You don't get to see that, right? You don't get to see that until you have your own do key. Until you live in your own house. Right? I don't care, and. Every once in a while, I, like I said, I got to do an audit. I think it's a time for, to do an audit, right? They don't know better. And I know that, like, when you're a kid, you think you know. I remember I thought I knew. They don't know. They don't know. So they require us to be that, right? And so that's it, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram 
and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.